Hello farmers, welcome back to No Man's Land. Been shuttling some logs from the vineyard on down to the sawmills. I have placed the third sawmill down. It is full of logs and is producing planks. And all three sawmills are actually selling the planks. I'm not actually producing any for the furniture shop as we speak. Uh, in the future, when the furniture shop needs some planks, I can just put them all on distribute and uh, we'll top them off completely. Uh, but right now, all three sawmills are full of logs, so that means it is time to do a little bit of work. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you where the third sawmill is kind of placed and what I've done for landscaping and such. Uh, I will need flight mode for this, so let's go ahead and go up into the sky. So this is the third sawmill. I put some trees down there. Uh, I did a little bit of a rant going up to the other two sawmills over there. Uh, but this is where the third one is. Uh, in the future, if I just have one sawmill producing planks for the furniture shop, I guess it'll be this one. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, just some rock cliffing over here, not too much. This space, I kind of flattened out left open because we're getting ready to put down a log storage or lumber storage uh, building there. Hopefully, is what we need. The one thing I have noticed about the Elk Mountain modding sawmills is... Uh, where the wood chips come out. I thought the wood chips, I would pull my trailer underneath this little device right here and the wood chips will come out, but it actually piles the wood chips out here as it does the lumber. Uh, the trigger for loading up the wood chips might actually be over here somewhere, uh, somewhere in this general vicinity, uh, but that's what we got so far. But what we need to do now, because I got too many logs, like I said, all three sawmills, well, except for that, the, thir uh, the third one, the first one, well, the, thir the third first one I put down, that makes sense. The first one I put down over here, uh, I had not topped off, but this one's been topped off-ish, and the one down here has definitely been topped off. But let's go ahead and try out this lumber storage shed. I don't know if it's a production building. I don't know what it's going to be under. But let's go to construction, uh, and I have no idea where it is, so it may take me a minute to find it. Is it going to be under production? I don't know. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if it's under sheds or is it under silos. I'm not too sure. Uh, let me scroll through here quickly. I kind of know what it looks like. Uh, is it a selling point? I don't think it's a selling point, but then these lumber sawmills we put down were a selling point. Uh, let's see here. Where where art thou? It might be under silos, actually. Uh, let me go back to buildings. Let me go to silos. Scroll around. Lumber storage. There we go. Uh, ooh, there's a whole bunch of different ones we can do here. Uh, lumber storage mod, that was for 100. Lumber storage mod, let's see, what does this one look like? Uh, that is a decent size one right there, but it's only, it's only 50,000. What does this one look like? Um, this one, that kind of look a little bit better. Let's see, this shed will allow you to store your spruce logs. So will this one. Um, I kind of like the open look one a little bit more. This pile will allow you to store your pine logs. Ooh, so there's one for spruce, one for pine? Uh, are these spruce or pine trees? I'm not too sure what it's classified as. Um, that is a good question. Well, if you just walk up to the trees, I think they're all spruce. That says spruce, spruce, spruce. So these are all spruce trees on the map, maybe. All right, so we need one for spruce trees. Let's go back into construction. And it was silos. So we want spruce. Uh, it doesn't say how much it holds or what it does. And where the trigger points are. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate what we're doing here. Let's see, 46000 That's exactly what it costs. It should be really, really, really flat here. Um, well, let's put it down and find out what it does. Uh, put down some concrete. All right, and let's see here. Uh, let's go in and let me put on the triggers so we can kind of see where we need to go. Interactive zone markers. Oops. Uh, so that might be where it... Uh, no, actually this is for the wood chips for the sawmill. I would assume this is for not enough lumber to, in storage to output, so that's for outputting. And I guess this is where we drop off our logs and what is this storage logs all right so it must be i gotta pull over here drop them off okay so good thing i left enough room to pull on through 
Oh, that's right, I got flight mode on. Can't jump into a vehicle with flight mode on. So the question is, how much storage will these go into? Now, I assume that this will also distribute the logs. So if I go into production buildings, maybe it'll distribute the logs to the sawmills completely. Let's see, if I pull over like that, maybe. And come over to here, store logs. Boom, all the logs are stored. And we can actually see the logs being stored up there, which is good. Oh, looks like this can hold a lot of logs, I think. Uh, let's go into here. And is this actually a production building kind of a thing? No, it's not. So it's not a production. It's 24% full. Output logs. Choose number of logs. Oh, so this will just be as place for storage if I want to take the logs back out. I got to output them and I'm pretty sure they'll pop out here. I load them back up and then take them to the sawmill. That's fine. That's just fine with me. Uh, it would be a little bit more convenient if it was actually like a production building to where I can store them then dish them on out. But this will work just fine. Uh, let me turn the interactive markers back off. I always like them off. Just makes it look a little bit better around the map with all, all these indicators. But sometimes it's nice to turn them on so you know where things are. So I'll have to do a little bit more landscaping around here to where we pull in and out. But these, uh, that's going to store like 100,000 liters, maybe? Something like that, which is... It's okay. <laughs> But unfortunately, the sawmills are not going through the logs as quickly as I was hoping they would. And that storage, it's going to hold enough. It's going to let me get rid of these logs that are over here by the vineyard. But once we get these logs cleared up here by the vineyard, uh, we can, we're going to add some more grapes today. And then we're going to buy a couple of pruners for our landini. We're going to put one on the front, one on the back. We're trying to do two rows at a time. And uh, yeah, then we should be all set. And then we'll see how much time we got left. Let's see if we got any... See if we can place down some beehives over in our sunflower field. But I actually had a lot more logs over here than I originally thought I did when I brought in the tree harvester and brought it back from renting. I'm like, yeah, did I cut down enough logs? Well, it looks like I may have. So, we're doing just fine here. And uh, I got a couple of logs here, like this one here. The tree harvester had a couple problems with the smaller trees always delimbing there's like always one limb on there okay so there's that one there now let's see am i on the right or left let me turn this on nope uh okay it's loading but it's loading in the back i want it to load in the front all right so i do got some trees here that are also got that that's it's the same limb on all of them and there's been a couple of them i haven't been able to get the limbs off there we go. There's that one. Let's get this one. Nope. Gotta find it here. Alright. Any more? There probably is more. We'll find them as we go. And of course, just as I pull up, I see another one, of course. That's just a bush. That's not part of the limb there. So I should pick it up. Yep. Picked it up. And I do got a little bit of a log here. See if that picks up. Because so I don't think it'll allow me to place the vineyard. Is that log too small for it to be picked up? Luckily, we can pick it up and shove it in here. And there we go. Simple as that. Now he's got to pick up the remaining logs here. Should be able to get them all in trailer. Thank you for the auto loader. I will be interested to see. Um, of course, this news has been out for a little while now. Maybe about a week until you see this video. But uh, Farming Simulator and Volvo have agreed to a partnership. So I'll be interested to see when the, that package comes out. Which should be November on the Platinum set. Um, what kind of uh, vehicles we'll get from Volvo. I'm pretty sure we'll probably get like the Globetrotters truck 
some oh, wheel loaders, some other interesting things, I'm sure. I wonder if I'll do anything with logging. I'm not sure about that. Uh, can we pick up that log there, please? Why is that log not getting picked up? What's wrong with this log here? Uh, I'm going to need super strength to move that one, I think. Now, why won't that one get picked up? What is wrong with that log? I am loading on the left side. Auto switch to the left side. Okay, how did that get... Uh... There we go. Now it's loaded on up. Let's strap those in. And I think I'm going to do the vineyard now and leave the logging trailer over here in case there's more logs. So let's park this right here. And we'll stand right here, I think. Uh, so now we got to go back into construction, um, production, orchards of all things, and a grapevine. Let's see here. Should I start over by the tree line or kind of start over by the road? All right, got to make sure I give myself some room to turn around with equipment. So I think we'll just start like right here. And we're going to come on down. We'll do about $13,000 per row, I guess. Because why not? Then I guess I can just go from here on up. This is so much better than when Farming Simulator 22 came out. And how it went. Like how it locks together. Uh, no, can I? Oh, uh, crap. Let me, um... That's going to bug me if it's not even. All right, how about if I demolish a little bit like this? And unfortunately, you don't get your money back on it. Can I not connect it to the previous one? You're going to make me delete that whole row. There we go. Got to fiddle with it a little bit just to get it matched back up. It's getting expensive, but hopefully it'll pay off in the long run. You're definitely not putting down a vineyard and an olive grove just for a one-year type of thing. This is for something if you're going to be on the map for a few years in order for it to pay off. How are we doing the money? Okay, we still got like half a million dollars in the bank account. Why won't you... There we go. Had to think about it for a minute. And can I sneak another row in here? Alright, there we go. There's that right there. And then we're going to come over to here. I'm going to add to these rows right here.
Okay, last row, I think, for now. That brings us down to 400,000. I don't want to expand much more than that. All right, so with that being done, uh, so it looks like we got all the logs. Of course, this needs plowing. So does that over there. Um, it says growing. Precision farming just says yield potential, 100 yield uh, expected, 59. No data found. Oh, that's why. Uh, yep, we got to go back in. We got to purchase. Let's come over to here and soil sampling for 4,000. Yep, we'll do that. And of course, we got to purchase for this lot as well. There we go. And now we can see the nitrogen is perfect. So it's almost like in precision farming, uh, it's probably not going to tell me. I've got to prune these. We'll wait until it starts growing. But this one doesn't have, this one has 45 nitrogen out of zero. So it's almost like these don't need to be fertilized. I'm not too sure about that. I think that's why maybe the yield isn't so good. I mean, the ground is not fertilized, but I think the I think the orchards will need to be fertilized. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure. Can't really say. I know in if I wasn't doing precision farming, these would need to be fertilized. But as of right now, I'm not too sure. Okay, we need to go to the store. Let's go into grapes. And we're looking for these right here. Actually, let me check the store. Okay, no, okay. Nothing in the in the store for sale. That's uh, looking good. Uh, but we need two of these. These are the pruners. We're going to try to do two of them at a time. So we'll buy two of those. One for the front of the Landini. One for the back. And hopefully we can do two rows at a time. So let me go down to the store, we'll hook up to those, I'll bring it on back, and start pruning up the vines that we had from last season. Now it's starting to look like a vineyard run here, but getting more vines up. So this will be my first time doing this, so let's see if I can do this well enough. Uh, do I just turn that? I need to unfold it. Interesting. Turn that one on. Now we'll unfold the front one. Turn that one on. So can I do two at once or... Okay, so wait a minute. Is there a way to move these in and out? Is that going to squeeze over far enough? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I think it's got a sense where they are and it will adjust. Right? Hopefully. I mean, it's working. I don't want to go too fast either because I don't want to screw it up. But I think it's working rather well. I think um, when I was watching a couple people do it before, I don't know if maybe they uh, did some justifications to the pruners. Um, uh, but one person I watched do it, the land was kind of, from right to left, it was on a kind of a big slope, so maybe that's why it was causing them some problems. But that one seemed to work just fine-ish. And getting two rows done at a time does rather well. Now, I'm not going to bother plowing between the rows until uh, the grass grows a little bit more. And that way I can plow and mulch at the same time. Oh, so I got one back here that didn't quite prune. With the Landini, we went with the Landini because of the more horsepower. And this is running both of these implements with no problem whatsoever. Now I do want to, I did want more of a vineyard than what we currently have, but money, I know I still got like 350,000, um, but we still got more to do here in the month of March and I need the cash for that. So uh, we'll have to expand the vineyard probably next year. Or if the money comes in rather well the next month or so, we can still plant grapes, I believe until May. So that's not too bad. I 
I mean, I could be doing a lot faster, but if I go a lot faster, I'm pretty sure I'll keep missing little spots like that. Not really sure I know what the working speed of these are, but when I get to the end of a row, I can put the pedal to the floor and see what it does. Now that I got these pruned, these should be growing, I do believe now. Yep, it says growing. And yeah, it says nitrogen zero. So in precision farming, do grapes need fertilization? If they don't, that's a big step that we're eliminating. And kind of the reason why I was getting a lot of manure. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. Um, I feel like I want to spray them with fertilizer. I just do. I think it might help out our, our, our production of grapes. But yes, you can do it with uh, an implement on the front and back as long as the ground's level enough. Like I said, if you take it slow enough, let's see, what's the working speed of this? I guess the working speed is six miles an hour. That's what I'm doing. As fast as we can go. And like I said, if you go too fast, you can miss little spots here and there. But for what these cost, what they were like, what, 16 grand a piece? Um, definitely worth uh, getting both of them. I mean, it's going to make your job just half as much being able to do two rows at a time. It is a little bit tricky, as you can see, just to keep them. Getting both done at the same time. All right, I got a few more rows to go, as you can see. Let me go ahead and get some more done. And then um, we're going to head back to the sawmill and put down a shed. I'm not sure what shed yet, but uh, originally I was just going to put on a shed big enough for the logging trailer and a tree harvester, but I think we're going to go ahead and put down a big shed for all of our trailers and whatnot. If we're going to put down a shed, might as well put them down, one big one down for all of them. Every time I think I'm in the groove of pruning these things, I end up missing a spot here and there. But overall, yeah, you can do it. Did I just miss a spot? Yep, of course I did. Let's go back and get that. There we go. Yeah, it's too bad you, uh, they don't have an adjustment on these. Uh, I think it's an automatic adjustment that it's doing, but if it could be just a little bit wider to make it just a little bit more simpler. Although, I don't think Giants intended us to try to do two rows at a time. But... Yeah, can you give us just a little bit more adjustment on these so it just makes it a little bit easier? I did lower the pruners as well. When I first started, the pruners were still upright, but I lowered them down. Um, didn't help that much, but... I got them just about all pruned here. So hopefully our grape production will be a little bit better this season. Uh, last year we got just under, I think, 11,000 liters. So hopefully this year we'll get somewhere around 25. Because, well, we got more vines and hopefully I'll take care of this a little bit better. Yep, sure. Just like I said, just as soon as you think you, you got a good rhythm going, you, then you miss a chunk. And I do have one of the new vines I put up for some reason. Uh, what row is it in? Just right up here. It just seems very weird that with precision farming and the grapes, 
And I assume it's going to be the same with the olives, that they're not going to require nitrogen. This doesn't seem right. So if we get on out here, I will uh, spread the lime down to get the pH value better because it's in bad condition. Although some people have said that doesn't matter either. Uh, but we can see they all need plowing, which is fine. We got the plow for that, but we don't have the mulcher yet. So I'm going to wait until uh, these are ready to harvest in like October-ish, somewhere on there. So maybe in September we'll mulch and plow then. I don't know if by waiting longer, if it hurts to yield or not, not too sure. Well, at least the uh, lime spreader that I used last season, just to make sure the lime is where it needs to be. Although it doesn't seem to be like after you harvest it, the lime does not go down, the pH value that is. Let me go ahead and pop these in here. But getting two of them does help. Although it can be a little frustrating once in a while when you keep missing a spot here and there. All right, we'll put that down. Uh, no, let's get off that page. We'll go to that page and let's see. I don't have. Nope, we we'll need the Deutz fire for this. Let's go up to the sunflower field and we'll get our digestate sprayer all stretched out and we'll see what we want to put down these small beehives to help out production in our sunflower field or whatever field you know it could be canola or even potatoes i'm not sure if, I ever, if i'm going to do potatoes or not i don't want to say i would like to just do everything i can on this map uh, just to show people that maybe they've not played farming simulator before maybe not have seen potatoes or what have you like even poplars i did poplars once myself in 17 i thought never again uh but who knows we, we may get involved in that all right so i just need to use the digestate sprayer as a guide because i want to be able to go on down on the edge of the fields with it now the one thing i don't know if i can do this because i never tried it before First, let me spread this on out here so I can get a good idea where we need to be. Alright, so somewhere like right about there to give me a good guide. Alright, so what I need to do next is just to make sure I hit the right button. I think if you're in developer mode and you have it activated on your game, at least on PC, if I hit F4, right? Is it F4? There's F5. Uh, let's see here. I believe it's F5. Nope, that's not correct, is it? Uh, hit it again. Yep, so you got to keep hitting F5 until you get the right circles. So we can kind of see where the beehives that we have currently are being covered. And they're barely covering this. Now, I don't know if I leave this on. If I go to place new beehives down, will it show me before I place it the area that it covers? We're about to find out here. Uh, let's see. Let's go into construction. Animals. Bees. And no, it's not going to show me the area of effect until I place it down. Uh, do I want the small ones down? Or do I want ones that are a little bit taller? Probably the ones a little bit taller. That way I can see them uh, when we're harvesting. Might be a good idea, right? Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, crap, I, that was a misclick, uh, but it's there, but I can see that one, the area of effect, and I actually placed it pretty darn good, actually. You can see the curve is like right on the edge of the field there. All right, 
Uh, so if we come... Actually, let me, let me face this way. Alright, so once I get out of range, I can't see where it covers. So I'll kind of have to guess where it needs to be. Uh, sure. I can see that circle. Boy, it's hard to tell. And then... Yeah, it doesn't have to be too precise, but we're going to cover, try to cover most of the field. Alright, so actually we don't need that many beehives. Uh, let's see, so that one ends here. So if I go to like another 75 meters and place that one there. Alright, so now if I come directly up from this one, that's 75 meters. And we'll place this one like right there. Let's see, that one's there. And there. And then somewhere like right there. Uh, do I want more up here sure he says we're going to place one there and we'll place one more there I think that'll work and we'll definitely get more honey out of it now, the one thing I would like to do, first off, let's get rid of these lines here. We don't need those anymore because uh, we're placed down. Well, let's go back into construction and landscaping, uh, painting, and forest ground. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Actually, let's do it on a circle. That's kind of weird. It does the same thing there. It does just give us a little bit of space when we're harvesting around it, so... That's all it's really trying to do. But it's kind of weird that it's doing that kind of design. I don't want to go much bigger than that. So we'll get a little bit more honey and we'll get should get a better yield off the field. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing doing that with a little like the little, little cross. Uh, did I get them all? I think so. All right, so there is that. Uh, next thing I want to do is we're going to jump on down. Oh, that's kind of weird seeing that seeing it like that. Well, we're going to jump on down to the sawmills. And the next thing I want to do is I want to put a shed down here. Uh, do I want it up here or down there? I mean, it doesn't really matter. It looks like I got more space up here and it's kind of relatively flat up here. Let's go into construction and we want to do sheds. And let's see here. Nah, not that one. I think... We want to go with, eh, not that one either. Hmm. Well, this is a hundred and seventy. Wow, that's expensive. Uh, I may hold off on these kind of sheds here. That's 340. That'd be definitely big enough for our trailers and such, but I don't need one that big. I've used these before on the Pacific Northwest in 19. They're not bad, but it's not what I'm looking for. This is 160,000. I may do a little bit more research on the shed itself. I 
Okay, that was not too bad for 150. Uh, I think I got to figure out how many trailers I'm going to have and how big of a shed I want and all that. And I think I want to look at designs. I mean, those are not looking too bad, but um, I'd like to see if I can find something a little bit better. So not too bad. We're moving along nicely here in the month of March. Uh, let me go back to flight mode so we can see exactly what's going on here. So we got down three sawmills. Uh, got to go over and take out the wood chips out of the other sawmill over by Have a Seat, which is... Uh, should be, let's see, there's, uh, yeah, that's going to be like right over in this general area right here, somewhere that sawmill is <laughs> over here and, uh, take out the wood chips out of there. Then we'll sell that sawmill and then the sawmill will be over here. Um, we got the new vineyard put down, which is looking good. We're going to put a shed here, I think still in the month of March and then maybe do a little bit of digestate. I got to grab some slurry out of the cow barn. And also the pigsty, bring that down to be processed to the BGA to start bringing some cash back in. And in the month of April, we'll have some clothing to sell. And we should get like 120, 130, 40, or $50,000, somewhere around there from doing that. But, uh, yep, now we got ourselves a little sawmill building going over here in a log storage area, which is not too bad. Uh, but I got to see if I can paint around this a little bit better. I don't know if I want the concrete around here. I may want it as all dirt. But anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here in No Man's Land. But until then, have a good one.